you want to be able to turn on your tap and continue to drink relatively clean water, now is the time to try and protect it. We must not risk the drinking water that we have spent a century building up this watershed. Nature spent 60 or 70 million years. We've spent a century digging the aqueducts and, and the supply lines and to risk it all for some profit, to risk it all is absolutely irresponsible and wrong. This is the biggest environmental threat facing New Yorkers. This is our water we're talking about. And if you're going to stand up and fight, this is the thing to fight for. This water, which is a public resource, is being taken away from us, is being contaminated, is being put back into the ground, put back into our taps, put back into our water systems with no filtration because we don't have the technologies to properly filter it. And this is what's happening in Pennsylvania right now. This is what could be happening in New York State. At this moment in the history of this state, there is a great environmental crisis facing all of us. The sanctity of our water supply is something that must never be taken for granted. Yeah. New York City has the largest unfiltered supply of water in the United States, and we have the best drinking water in the world. A few weeks ago, the state environmental agency proposed rules that would allow hydraulic fracturing to go forward in New York City's watershed. They say, they say don't worry, because we've got protections in place, we'll keep everything safe. Well, we say, kill the drill. In pencil. The reason why gas drilling right now is so controversial is because of the new methods of gas drilling being used, which aren't so new, but they're called unconventional methods of gas drilling, also known as hydraulic fracturing or hydrofracking or fracking. Um, this method of drilling actually is different from the older methods of drilling, which are called vertical drilling. Vertical drilling was just drilling a, a well into the ground um, at a certain depth, blasting water into it and extracting the gas. Horizontal drilling is similar, but um, engages this new technique which actually blasts the rock horizontally creating fissures across the whole rock and uses much more water and also requires the use of certain lubricant chemicals as they call them which some of which are very toxic and that helps the water guide through the rock and releases the gas throughout the rock so the rock actually gets split and some of the water and the chemicals can find their way through fissures up the rock and can spread for great distances. In Pennsylvania, where frack drilling is allowed, families can light their tap water on fire, kill the drill. Kill the drill. All of the fresh water that they use becomes contaminated by these toxic chemicals. And it's supposed to all come back up with the gas, but depending on the well, 30 to 70 percent of it stays underground. That contaminates whatever aquifers there are underground and because of natural, the natural geology of any area which already has fractures, already has layers, uh, the fractures can go in any direction, horizontally, vertically, diagonally. And the contaminated water can and has spread in all of those directions. Halliburton, you remember Halliburton? That's Dick Cheney's place? They won't tell us what chemicals go into their frack fluid. It's their top secret. It's the formula for Coca-Cola or a Big Mac special sauce. We say, kill the drill. Kill the drill! And of course, one of the things that we have to recognize is that scientists have found over 250 toxic chemicals in frack fluid. Carcinogens, endocrine disruptors, we say kill the drill. And, and, and some of you say, and the wastewater that comes from the wells is just as dangerous. It contains huge amounts of radioactive chemicals. That is why, folks, we must kill this drill. Starting in the 1970s, uh, the Congress passed a number of 
laws protecting us and our environment. Clean Air Act, Clean Water Act, Safe Drinking Water Act, uh, and there's also one that includes in its title the Right to Know Act, so that people in a democracy should be informed of what's going on around them. And uh, in 2005, the, two, the energy bill that Dick Cheney pushed got passed, and it exempted gas and oil corporations from revealing what, uh, s what chemicals they were using in their drilling processes. And that's the situation we have now. What you have to understand here is that all across the nation, these energy companies have been uh, doing this hydrofracking, putting one over on people in unpopulated areas where they don't have the support of a crowd like this. Statewide ban! Statewide ban! Statewide ban! There are signs here that say statewide ban. I'm going to say nationwide ban. The Department of Environmental Conservation on the state level is the agency that's tasked with regulating gas drilling and making sure that it's safe, that water is not contaminated, that certain regulations are met. The DEC is very understaffed in this regard. There are a number of reasons why we believe that the DEC is not prepared to deal with the rush of gas drilling. And the DEC recently released their environmental impact statement, which is called the Draft Supplemental Generic Environmental Impact Statement, or DSGEIS. And this is the most updated impact statement that reviews new horizontal methods of gas drilling in New York State. And the impact statement is about 800 pages long. It's difficult to get through, but there are a number of different summaries. It's really important to issue comments on this impact statement. We have the opportunity to do that now. This is a very controversial subject. What DEC finally decides to do is really important. So even if you don't speak tonight, I'd encourage you to take a look at the draft, make judgments for yourself about what it says and what it doesn't say, reach your own conclusions, and submit your comments. Excuse me, sir. Would you please, would you, sir? Hydraulic fracturing practice creates an unprecedented amount of wastewater that New York State cannot currently handle. The DSGEIS states that each well will produce between 216,000 to 2.7 million gallons of wastewater. The DEC also estimates that 2,000 permits could be issued for natural gas drilling per year. Given these numbers, one hundreds of millions, if not billions of gallons of wastewater will be produced by natural gas drilling in New York State per, per year with no place to go. The Susquehanna River Basin Commission estimated that in the New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio area that is now being uh, looked at very seriously by the oil and gas companies. Um, they estimated that between 2 million and, f and 9 million gallons of water per well are needed. Now that's per well per fracking. And a well can be uh, fracked maybe uh, 10 or 20 times over a 20 or 30 year period, depending on the local conditions. So we're talking about literally billions of gallons of water, and of course this is all fresh water. Where does it come from? Our rivers, our lakes, our streams, our ponds. And then what happens to it? In this particular area, there are, I think, three wastewater plants in Pennsylvania, and the, uh, and the New York State DEC said, oh well, the the uh, contaminated water that comes back up out of the ground from drilling in New York State, well, we can send it to those plants. But the head of those plants, those three plants, said, well, we're running at capacity now, or virtually at capacity, so there's no way that we can deal with that. And in any case, any filtration system that exists can only deal with biological contaminants. Uh, and uh, I, have, I have come across nothing uh, that indicates that chemicals like this can be filtered out of water. This is a, a, an enormously serious situation. Now, it's not just that two to nine millions, million gallons of water are needed for each well for each fracking, but how many wells are we talking about? The southern tier of New York State, according to present well spacing regulations, can accommodate approximately 800,000 wells. Now, even if we want to be conservative but still realistic, 
if we say a quarter of that number, 200,000 wells, is extremely likely. Well, 200,000 wells times 2 to 9 million gallons per well per fracking amounts to literally billions of gallons of water, all of which becomes completely contaminated. Clean and safe water is a basic right that New Yorkers should expect their government to protect. And it's quite clear that jeopardizing the water supply has a huge cost aside from public health. It's obvious that the lure of revenues for the state is putting this issue on the table now where it doesn't even belong. But DEC, but DEC needs to stop its ears against the siren call of the almighty dollar. Perhaps the most eloquent argument for the ban comes from the actions of a gas drilling company, Chesapeake Energy, that recently decided to back out of drilling in the Catskill Basin because it did not want to be responsible for polluting the water supply of New York City. If a company that stands to profit from the drilling can see that simple truth, the first time, by the way, I can never recall a company getting out ahead of the regulators, the question is why The question is, why DEC and the state cannot see that same simple truth? Let me use this opportunity to reiterate and to reaffirm the decision we made not to drill for natural gas in New York City watershed. This was a business decision. Yes, we understand the environmental concerns. With that being said, we know without a doubt we could drill safely in any watershed. Today, Chesapeake is focused on leasing and drilling efforts in New York State and areas across the southern tier. Our geoscience shows the area, these areas are much more geologically perspective with higher reserves of natural gas. We are all in this together. We need a statewide ban. Let me say another thing, and this is to Chesapeake um, company, the Chesapeake Company. I think it's great that you extended your generous offer to the New York City watershed residents, but you are not going to succeed in dividing and conquering us. What about our watershed? What makes you think that any one person's water is worth more than someone else's water in this great state? And to the Department of Environmental Conservation, I, I have a bluff for you. And that is, I would like to know how many of the senior members of your staff have read this document. Because I would say that if Peter Granis read this document, or if you who are here with us tonight have actually read it, you would not be sitting here quite so sanguinely. In the end, this document is not about our opinions about wouldn't it be nice if we had gas, or wouldn't it be nice if this or that could happen. This is a legal process. This document is supposed to be part of the CEQA, that's the State Environmental Quality Review Act process. These public hearings are part of that legal process. I am here to tell you what I think, if you've read this document, you would already know. It is facially, legally flawed in numerous respects, many of which have already been mentioned tonight. And, and in addition, we shouldn't be the ones who are reporting to you that radiation levels are higher than you expected or that there are 270 examples of uncleaned up contamination due to natural gas drilling. If you had done your jobs, you would have included it in your draft. We'll not back off of this uh, because Chesapeake has stated as one company that they won't drill in the New York City watershed because when we're looking at this nationally um, and we look at the ramifications for all of New York State, it's, it's clear that this has to be banned and that this is the wrong direction to move in uh, for our energy as a nation. The list of fracking chemicals that you've uh, provided, I think it's on page I-76, um, is incomplete. Uh, it mentions only a few of the fracking chemicals. And on the breakdown in the corner, it's worth noting that there's a Chesapeake logo. I'm not so sure, seriously, I, I'm not so sure you intended to leave that in there, but it shows the lack of proofreading and the lack of research on behalf of the DEC. There was a gentleman from the oil and gas industry that said, listen, let me just put it to you frankly. 
if you make it too hard for us to frack here, we're going to frack somewhere else. Well, this is, this is what that comes down to. It's like saying, listen, I'm going to give you a million bucks, but I'm going to take a big dump in your living room if you want it. And uh, some people want the money, but others don't. And I really think it's up to DEC to decide whether or not they're going to take a big dump in our living room. You have the look of a man who's trying to distract himself from a long and difficult evening by going through your emails. And if you worked for me, I would be doing that too. Because frankly, this EIS is an intellectual embarrassment. I've read many and prepared many EISs. This is the worst EIS that Donald Trump did for Trump City. <laughs> you needed at least another year of work to complete this EIS. The fact of the matter is that it has all of these holes in it because it is a put-up job designed to be an advocacy document, not an impartial weighing of circumstances. <laughs> Take action before it is too late. To learn more about banning the poisonous fracking gas extraction process throughout New York State and to sign the petition, go to un-naturalgas.org. Understand the gravity of this situation, to understand that between the southern tier and New York City, 14 million New Yorkers are under direct threat. If the Caskill Delaware watershed is quote unquote protected from hydrofracturing and drilling is allowed two miles outside the watershed or say five miles outside the watershed. The irony is that the watershed will not be protected. No one can know what will happen with leakage of plumes and there will be because there always are, there always have been. You hear a lot of, of these words like migration of, of gas into water supplies, contamination, uh, glycol ethers, fracking chemicals. We don't need to speculate as to what's going to happen in the New York City watershed or in New York State at large when the, if drilling were to occur. We don't need to speculate. This is happening now. We can see this with our own eyes. We can hear the stories. And it's, um, it's amazing to me uh, how little um, people actually understand what this looks like. So I would like to offer this, uh, this uh, DVD and other images to the board, and I think a key here is in using the media. Um, you're gonna see Mike Markham here uh, at his kitchen sink. So that's not a fake. You're gonna see a, several more uh, examples of this. This is the Ellsworth, J uh, Jesse and Amy Ellsworth residence. Uh, also in Weld County, Colorado. And we've seen reports of flammable water from Pennsylvania to Arkansas to Louisiana to Texas. Here's another uh, family who can do the same thing. Now this is in a very heavily gas, uh, gas drilled area. This is uh, Renee McClure's uh, home video from her cell phone. The industry likes to say that this methane is naturally occurring and that people could do this for decades upon decades. But all these residents will tell you that uh, they've seen this start happening since 2005, since the significant upswing in hydraulic fracturing and drilling in those areas, and that the idea um, that this is naturally occurring is absurd. We know that um, natural gas is migrating into aquifers and directly into people's houses, and I'll note in this video, this is raw natural gas. This is not refined. This includes benzene, toluene, xylene, the volatile organic compounds that are carcinogenic, so these people are being sub subject to carcinogens in their own home. I'll also point out that um, in, the, in the Ellsworth's example, and I have Amy and Jesse Ellsworth's uh, water test right here. If you look at it, it's it's pretty extensive. This is both the Colorado Oil and Gas Commission review and an independent test, which states that their gas, there's two different, there's many kinds of natural gas, but there's two basic kinds. There's biogenic and thermogenic. Biogenic comes from decomposing trees and animals underneath the ground, it's relatively shallow. Thermogenic contains some of the heavier elements like propane and butane, and that comes only from the deeper layers. So th this shows, uh, with the Colorado Oil and Gas Conservation Commission's own standards, that their gas is thermogenic, which is to say it can only be coming from the deeper shale layers, and that is in this report. Sorry for the interruption, but I, you just made me think of something. How dare we have this whole thing and not have anyone here from Region 2 to hear each and every word uh, that's said. They work for us. They have to hear this. 
I went and uh, interviewed Weston Wilson, who is a uh, Region 8 um, EPA whistleblower. The EPA has been off the job since 2001. Um, their peer review panel showed a conflict of interest of five of seven members. Um, and then the Safe Drinking Water Act exemptions went through, and basically there is no science. Weston Wilson is quoted in the film as saying, after that point, all science, all data, everything stopped. Until this spring, when they went to Pavilion, Wyoming, um, to see these guys, Lewis Meeks and John Fenton. And you can see Lewis Meeks's water well here um, with pieces of oil in, on the surface. And then you'll see him take a blowtorch to his well, and uh, you can actually see him lighting, creating a kind of liquid plastic. His well water had glycol ethers in them. Um, so this is the very first time the EPA has actually looked into this kind of contamination of fracking fluids in a, uh, a person's water well. And I have those EPA reports here. Also, I'd like to submit them. To send comments to Governor Patterson and to the Department of Environmental Conservation about fracking and the danger to New York State's water, go to shaleshock.org. I wanted to just show one more video here, which is the EPA's own video, um, which shows condensate tanks. I would like to submit the uh, Al Armendariz's air quality report. And we talked a little bit about binding New York State to um, uh, New York City. In Sullivan County alone, we're talking about a proposal for 10,000 wells. Now, Sullivan County is not in the New York City watershed. In Dallas-Fort Worth, Al Armendariz's air study shows that the 7,700 wells in the Dallas-Fort Worth area contribute more air pollution or an equal amount of air pollution to all the cars and trucks in all the Dallas-Fort Worth metroplex. So if you're drilling 7,700 wells and the estimates for up there are much greater, you're creating an urban air pollution situation on the level of the fourth largest city in America. That's going to come down. That's our airshed. We need to, this is the environmental board. We also need to be defining our airshed and talking about how this is going to create an unprecedented air pollution situation. One of the ways that that happens, here we'll see, you'll see a drill rig um, uh, in operation. You can see here, this is, un, this is unmonitored diesel uh, exhaust. These rigs can go through 800 gallons of diesel a day. So just to drill, um, you're talking about a, a, a severe situation. This is a condensate tank. It's right next to a school. Um, condensate tanks look like this in regular to the naked eye. But when you look at them with an infrared camera, they're billowing these huge plumes of volatile organic compounds that are coming right off the top there. That's benzene, toluene, methane, um, a whole host of volatile organics. Methane is 24 times the, uh, the, carbon, uh, the greenhouse gas than carbon dioxide. So you're seeing this directly going into the air, which is why in the town of Dish, you have such a severe air pollution situation because they have pipelines that also do this kind of venting. They have uh, compressor stations that also do this kind of venting and condensate tanks. Just, a, just a, a list here of what's going on in Dish. 55 times the health standard of benzene in the air. Chemicals including benzene, dimethyl disulfide, methyl ethyl disulfide, ethyl methyl ethyl disulfide, trimethyl benzene, diethyl benzene, methyl, methyl ethyl benzene, tetramethyl benzene, and the list goes on. Point taken. We're trying to conduct the people's business here. This is a very important matter before DEC. DEC, at a minimum, if they choose not to testify, which they've chosen not to do, that's fine, but they should be in the room. That's what I think, and if that's what you think, you should tell them. The DEC isn't listening. We already know that. We already know um, that this is a procedure that they have to, uh, they have to do. This is not about individuals, and it's not about a one-shot hearing or a one-day rally. This is about building a political movement, whether it's on Facebook, the internet, different organizations, not just in New York, but around the country. Everybody must sign up tonight to do something. Everybody must sign up to participate. Everybody must sign a letter, send an email, call it a, a politician, but everybody's got to involve their friends. Tonight on our Facebook, we want a thousand volunteers to sign up to kill the drill. Take action before it is too late. To learn more about banning the poisonous fracking gas extraction process throughout New York State and to sign the petition, go to un-naturalgas.org. 
to send comments to Governor Patterson and to the Department of Environmental Conservation about fracking and the danger to New York State's water, go to shaleshock.org. To learn more about the dangers of hydrofracking and to watch video of people's tap water exploding, go to waterunderattack.com. After this is over, when they've already said, okay, well, we're going to go ahead with it, that we're going to stand in front of the trucks, that we're going to go ahead and get arrested, that we're going to go yeah. ahead and, and, and prevent this from happening in any way you possibly can. It's much more fun to get arrested for one night, go to jail with your friends, than it is to do it by yourself. So make sure you tap the person next to you and say, I'm going to stand in front of those drilling rigs. and our rights are slowly being eroded by executive orders and by signing statements. Do you think the government should be able to just march in for a developer and kick you out? You should think that if it can happen here, it can happen to anyone anywhere. This devolution of the American press began in 1988 when Ronald Reagan abolished the Fairness Doctrine. I don't understand why we can't have a little piece of history when everybody else has so much. No more stolen fraudulent elections. This is uh, Freddie's Brooklyn Roundhouse with Cynthia McKinney. As my fellow Brooklynite, Allen Ginsberg said, the soul should never die ungodly in an armed madhouse. Freddie's Brooklyn Roundhouse. Watch the show the corporate media doesn't want you to see. Tuesdays at 8 in Brooklyn, Thursdays at 8.30 in Manhattan, and online all the time at Freddy's Brooklyn Roundhouse.org and YouTube.com slash Atlantic Yards.